Hey, it's Mike with Let's Talk About Reaper. This video will be a bit of a departure from my norm. This morning I watched a video from Cam Flurry where he was detailing his procedure for doing remote recording for drums. In the comments section, there was a little bit of discussion about the way that he's got his templates set up and how he has to go and click on each of the individual tracks to arm them. I thought I'd make a quick video to show my own drum recording template and hopefully be able to provide a way to make that a bit more efficient for him. Let's go into Reaper and take a look. I'll start with a blank project, and my normal process is to load a template that I've already got saved that has my drum routing already taken care of. I'll right click over in the track control panel, choose insert track from template, and I'll load my template mic drum tracking. Now you can see in the template that I've got some plugins already in there, and I've also got my faders and pan knobs in various positions. I've just got that kind of set to where I can get a reasonable rough mix with my default settings. The main thing that I wanted to show in this is my grouping. If you take a look at each of my record arm and disarm buttons on the tracks, you can see it's got a red flag which shows that those are all grouped. Now my track 18 is my drum crush bus. I've got some things routed to that, but I don't have that record armed because that's just receiving audio from other tracks. With my grouping, I can click any of these record arm buttons and you can see that it toggles all of the tracks on. The way that I've got my grouping set up, I can click on the record arm button on any of my tracks and it will automatically arm all of them. That was mentioned in the discussion thread with Cameron, but his concern was that he uses bussing on some of his tracks. I do the same thing. Now my toms, you can see, are in a bus or folder track. I've also got my overheads into a folder track, my rooms into a folder track, and my snares into a folder track as well. If you take a look at these in the armed state, you'll notice that all of my folder tracks have a little bit of a different color than the other tracks. What this indicates is that everything that's currently lit with bright red will actually be recording live audio, and my folder tracks, which are still grayed out, will not be recording any audio. If I right-click my room's record arm button, for example, you can see this option, Record Disable Input Monitoring Only. That means that that track will not record any actual audio. So let's delete these tracks and start from scratch, and I'll show you how to set this up. I'll right-click in my track control panel and insert multiple tracks. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll just add 10 tracks and I'll call it drums. Now I've got drums 1 through 10. Let's say that drums 2 and 3 are my snare top and bottom. I'll create a folder from those. And let's say that drums 4 and 5 are my toms. I'll create a folder from those. And let's just pretend that 6 and 7 are my overheads. I'll create a folder from those. If I can spell overheads. There we go. Now I'll go to my folder tracks, I can highlight each of them, right click the record arm button, and change its mode to record disable input monitoring only. Now you can see in the indicator here that that's been toggled on each of my folder tracks. Now I can highlight all of my drum tracks, press shift G to bring up the grouping matrix, and I'll set those to record arm lead and record arm follow for all of those tracks. You can rename this if you'd like, but be aware that the name for your group does not carry from one project to the next. Now that I've got that saved, you can see we've got the red flag just like I normally do in my main template. And if I record arm the toms folder track, everything is armed, with the exception of the folder tracks. Now as you can see now, I don't have my routing enabled. These are all actually receiving from my microphone at the moment. If you're creating a template for yourself, needless to say, you would need to route each track to its appropriate input. Once you've got your template set up the way that you'd like, you can highlight all of your tracks in the track control panel, right click, and save those tracks as a template. That way you can quickly recall your template and get to recording a lot faster than usual. If you'd like to see a bit more about how I set up for my drum tracking, drop a note in the comments. I've got a few different things that I do that might help to make your workflow a bit more efficient. Hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. This is normally the part where I hold up a cup and say I like coffee, but I'm just home for a few minutes on my lunch break, so I got no coffee. We'll see you next time.